Hey everyone, my name is Shanice and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be wrapping up all the books that I read in the month of April. There were only six this month, but I think it was a pretty worthwhile reading month. Um, so let's get started. So the first book that I finished was book three in the Neapolitan Quartet by Elena Ferrante, uh, translated by Anne Goldstein, and that was Those Who Leave and Those Who Stay. I ended up giving this three stars. Um, it's not my favorite in the series. I guess after reading the masterpiece that is book two, this felt sort of dull and monotonous. It's not a secret that I, I'm not the biggest fan of Lanou. I still think that she sort of appropriates other people's stories, specifically Leela's. And here this entire, not the entire book, but a lot of the book is kind of a secondhand recap of what happened to Leela, um, which I found more interesting than the sort of boring stuff that was happening to Lanou. Um, there's a lot of marriage struggle. Um, there's a character named Pietro who is aptly named because he is as dull as a rock. I found Lanou in here like really cruel, very selfish, kind of self-centered. I do relate to her writing struggle here. She's just trying to find her voice, trying to find another story that is her own. Does she succeed? I'm not entirely sure that she finds a, a unique original story of her own, but um, that is Lanou, that is the character presented. This book, as usual, um, as with the other books in the quartet, does excel in the nuances of the Italian class struggles, of the privilege of like the intelligentsia, kind of rich high society culture, of how that more academic life kind of clashes with the real time constraints of a working class life. There's a lot of really interesting political and social issues being discussed here. Great scenes of tension, especially there's this one phone call between Lanou and Leela, um, where you don't really know if or if anyone's acting, who was acting, is it really the truth, um, but it's just, it's a really fantastic moment of tension. I just find Leela kind of the more interesting character I always have, and this didn't convince me otherwise. Um, but I cannot wait to finally get to book four uh, as a reread for me, and yeah, I'm continuing my rewatch of the TV series, which is excellent. If anybody was wondering, I definitely recommend. Then the next book that I read was my short story collection challenge book of the month, uh, and that was After Parties by Anthony Viasno. So um, I actually had no idea that he passed away very shocking to me, um, and it's very sad. Uh, ultimately, and I feel horrible saying this given the fact of what I just said, but I did end up giving it like two and a half stars. Um, the first story, well actually, in general, the strengths for me are, yes, the nuance and intricacies of how Anthony portrays the Khmer culture. He gets into the like nitty gritty of like what it means to be Khmer versus Cambodian versus Chinese in ways that make you think how that kind of applies to other cultures too um, and challenges our language and understanding of how people identify um, and I thought that was really well done in the first story, The Three Women of Chuck's Donuts. The other stories, you know, they also focus on the immigrant experience, queer life, um, kind of pseudo-liberal culture, um, especially in the corporate workspace, the intricacies of interracial and intra-ethnic dating. There's just a lot of themes that are explored that you don't regularly see in short fiction or just in fiction in any form. I guess mainly too many of the stories were just light-hearted for me, like I wanted a little bit more depth. They felt kind of like hipster millennial frat bro-esque person trying to figure out their life but in like frat boy kind of manner which is not my thing. Sometimes I felt like I wasn't that interested in some of the characters or their stories so yeah if I'm honest I just didn't totally love it. Um, but there were just a lot of standout themes and messages in this book so I gave it two and a half stars. And next up I read Family Lore, which is actually going to be published in August of this year. I got an advanced copy from Nat Galley, and unfortunately I did end up giving this two stars. 
um, I am very appreciative of getting this advanced free copy, but um, I guess I just expected so much more. This was written by Elizabeth Acevedo, and I've never read her, any of her books, but I've always wanted to just because I remember hearing um, her slam poetry years ago. I mean, it really resonated with me because it's like a Dominican woman who isn't confused about her Afro descendancy and is really proud of it, and I just didn't find it that common at that time. So it really drew me to her, um, but I just, I never got around to reading anything by her. Um, so I'm very happy that, yes, I did get this opportunity to read an arc of her book. It just wasn't for me. Um, basically, it's about an older woman named Flor who is throwing herself a funeral party while she's still alive. Um, now, Flor has this gift of sort of predicting when people are going to die. Her dreams are prophetic. And so this concept alone I thought was really similar to the film called Get Low. Um, I don't know if anyone's seen that, but in that movie there's an older man who also throws himself a funeral party, like a death day party, I guess, um, while he's still alive. So I couldn't help comparing it to that premise, but I was still sort of interested in how Acevedo was going to explore Dominican culture and history with this premise. Um, to me it just felt like there were too many voices, it was too cluttered. Um, every chapter pretty much follows a different character, somebody's daughter usually, and it's interspersed through the writer of the larger work that is family lore, um, which and this person is Flor's daughter. She's an academic and we we do get her own like editorial interruptions here and there, interviews that she's recorded, kind of spliced in between the narratives from the other women in her family. Those academic breaks sometimes were the most interesting. Um, I kind of wish the whole book was just that perspective instead of all the other women <laughs> that Acevedo decided to make their own narrators, and though I liked them, they did break apart the pacing. Um, it just didn't feel that cohesive to me. I just felt the story was kind of predictable and unorganized. I feel so bad saying that, but again, I just want to be honest. Um, but who knows, maybe all of that sounds like something you would like to read. Um, it doesn't put me off from reading other things by this author this just was not for me. Next up I have my big book challenge of April and that was Betty by Tiffany McDaniel and I ended up giving this four stars. Um, the writing is superb. It is incredibly poetic and lyrical. Definitely pulls at the heartstrings. This is like the book equivalent of let's say an Oscar bait movie which isn't necessarily bad, but it definitely relies on an emotional reaction to the hardships of the characters. Um, so basically this is autobiographical. Betty is the author's mother and this book is told through Betty's perspective from the time that she was born up until I want to say her late teens. And this is kind of, it exemplifies the idea that you should never judge anyone just by what they look like or your initial impression of them. There's a story behind everyone and a struggle and a bunch of circumstances that shape who they are and give reason to who they are in the moment and time that they are in. Maybe some people would look at these characters in real life and think that they would make sweeping judgments on them like, oh, they must just be lazy or they must just not care about life and not be hardworking, but you don't know their story. Um, and once you do, you just see what history they hold and what personal strength they hold as well and how they have fortified their kids, even if it's not financially, but in other ways. The character of Landon in particular, who is Betty's father, just... I loved his character from beginning to end. That is a man who struggled, and yet remained super calm and positive. At times, this 
you know, veered on the over metaphorical and philosophical. Some of the children, especially Betty, at times sounded way too mature for their age, very precocious, made many adult decisions, and you can say it's because they had to be mature from an early age, but sometimes it just felt heavy handed. There was a point in here when Betty randomly submitted to like literary magazines. I wanted to see more of that journey because how did she how did she even come across lit magazines and who taught her like how to submit to one like there was just a jump that didn't fully make sense and there was one scene that I felt was a little odd it was almost using like racism against black people to explain something about indigenous life um, and anti-indigenous racism but it just felt a little off that's just me though um, but overall it was really touching really sad but also moving so yeah, I really enjoyed this. I gave this four stars. Next up, I read my Latin American pick for April, which is Indios y Negros en la Cultura Dominicana by Aida Cartagena Porta Latin. And this one, I ended up rating three and a half stars. Um, I was not sure what to expect with this. Um, essentially, it's a collection of a few of her essays on Arawak or Taino history and one big large study of a city in the Dominican Republic that has held on to its black heritage. And so I, there was an imbalance, I guess, in terms of the indigenous and the black history of the DR. There was definitely more of the former than the latter, which was not exactly what I wanted. Um, and this was very, very academic. These were academic papers that she wrote in either a graduate program or just in the in a more anthropological academic setting. I did like how post-colonial its quest was. The only thing is sometimes the language itself, while being written for post-colonialism, was still kind of doubling down on colonialism. You know, still considering Christopher Columbus going to the island as the discovery of America, which is, let's, you know, let's not say that. Um, so just some of the language can still be examined and changed, but I'm sure since then it has in academia and in the exploration of this part of Dominican culture. Um, so yeah, I gave it three and a half stars. Very happy that I read it. And lastly, I read Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson, and I gave this four stars. Drop Dead Gorgeous writing. Um, this is told in maybe my least favorite voice, which is second person. Um, the main narrator is a guy who just goes by uh, you, and this follows his unlikely and very brief relationship with a woman. Um, it, we follow them as they meet. She's actually dating his friend when he meets her, and then they get into it, and then it kind of distances the narrator from that friend, obviously, and then we follow them kind of getting to know each other and unfortunately falling out. Um, so this explores a lot of music, a lot of musical rhythmic language in here, um, and also just black art, black music, black literature, and examination of black British life. Um, kind of perfect for me. The only thing that I wished it had more of was time. I wish it was longer. I wish that we could explore these two characters for a longer bit of time. Um, it just kind of went by too quickly. It's very economic in its language, even though it is poetic. I just felt like I wanted more. Um, but I do have a, an arc for this author's next book, which is going to be published later in the year, and I'm so happy that I read this because this makes me want to dive into his works even more. It's seriously gorgeous writing. And I'll just give you a brief preview of this amazing writing. Um, so he writes, dance, you said, dance, sing, please do what you must. Look at your neighbor and understand they are in the same position. Turn to your neighbor and take one step forward as they take another step back. Switch positions, move, move, move. Become overwhelmed by the water. Let it wash over you. Let the trauma rise up like vomit, spill out, go on. Let it spill on the ground. Let go of that pain. Let go of that fear. Let go. You are safe here, you said. You are seen here. You can live here. 
We are all hurting, you said. They're all trying to live, to breathe, to find ourselves stopped by that which is out of our control. We find ourselves unseen. We find ourselves unheard. We find ourselves mislabeled. We who are loud and angry. We who are bold and brash. We who are black. We find ourselves not saying it how it is. We find ourselves scared. We found ourselves suppressed, you said. But do not worry about what has come before, or what will, or what will come. Move. Do not resist the call of a drum. Do not resist the thud of a kick, the tap of a snare, the rattle of a hi-hat. Do not hold your body stiff, but flow like easy water. Be here, please, you said, as a young man took a cowbell, moving it in a way which makes you ask, which came first, he or the music? The rat-ta-ta is perfect, offbeat, sneaking through brass and percussion. Can you hear the horns? Your time has come. Revel in glory, for it is yours to do so. You worked twice as hard today. That isn't important. Not here. Not now. All that matters is that you are here. That you are present. Can't you hear? What does it sound like? Freedom? And that is all. Those are all the books that I read in the month of April. Thank you so much for watching as usual. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.